Jimi Hendrix sort of deep dive. Uh, if you're following the channel, there's been three videos already. This is the fourth one. And this is um, after listening a lot and starting to play more in the Hendrix style. These are the sort of four or five habits that Hendrix had that I think really made his playing him. Now, they're not all of the habits and they're not, uh, I haven't shown them all in full depth because this video, I want you to think of it almost like a prototype for future videos that I think I would do on, in a sort of Patreon thing where you'd pay sort of like five quid a month and I'd release uh, you know, one or two videos a month that are much more in depth with tabs and with licks broken down uh, in different difficulty levels and speeds and everything. So this is really a gauge uh, and I haven't been able to spend much time on this because I'm about to go away in two days for quite a long time so I've got a lot to sew up. I wanted to put this out there so that when I get back I can see what you all think and decide whether it's worth that extra time or someone, other people are doing this info in a much better way anyway, playing it better and teaching it better, etc. But it's something I'm passionate about, you know, uh, because I sat there for a few years, really struggling to figure out how to break any player's nuances down. And with Hendrix, it's the first time I'm starting to feel like I'm getting a small handle on, on what he's doing. And I'd like to share that information to people who are looking for that. So this video is not about the tone. I've got a strap plugged into a two rock classic reverb coming through a Marshall cab. I think there's greenbacks in there. Actually not a sound I'm hugely loving, I've got to be honest. That's another video where we'll talk about that. Uh, I've got some fuzz on and uh, that's it really. So let's just get into it, uh, starting with habit number one. <laughs> Okay, so I've called this excessive vibrato. It's, it's not excessive, it's just that he did a lot of vibrato, different types of vibrato, some were really fast, some really pushed the frequencies almost out of tune, in fact, definitely did, and that was part of his sound. He vibratoed a lot when he bent, he vibratoed at the end of each little phrase. There could be lots of different vibratos within one short lick, so I've exaggerated it here, and um, as I said before, this is not everything in full depth, this is like, let's think of it like a, you know, just like a, an overview, like a pretty broad overview of everything. But anyway, here's an idea for how you could get into practicing this. <laughs> Okay, number 
two is the overbending. So like you heard some of it there. So I've exaggerated for effect there, you know, how many times he might use it uh, or how, you know, sort of where in the phrase he might use it. But so that you can start to practice the actual overbend, it's often I found the fifth of uh, the key. So if we're in the key of E, that would be the B. And uh, well, I'll show you here how, where you can bend that. Um, but you can play around with all sorts of bending. And um, like B.B. King, for example, he would do multiple bends on one note but he would always take it further. You know, he'll bend it way over often, um, say a tone and a half or even two tones, depending. Um, but it was always full of personality. And it sort of, um, uh, for me, it's one of the main trademarks actually of a Hendrix solo. Or it's on the uh, 16th fret of the G string. you do with him you can do it in a two stage sort of thing So between the excessive vibrato, whether you're in the bend or not, um, and that, you get a lot of the way. The other thing is he doesn't do it that much sliding compared to like more modern players. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, at the beginning of um, Red House. someone like Eric Gales he'll do it in a completely different way which is like this and it sounds I think it sounds great but it doesn't sound Jimmy so he will do thing is the double bends okay so another thing that Jimmy would do a lot is this sort of uh, double note where he would bend one of the notes um, in this case we're in the key of B so we'll do it in that key and uh, basically what you want to do is put your finger on uh, the B string fret 7 and then you're going to bend fret 9 of the G string and then you're gonna move it up two frets so B string fret 9 G string fret 11 and then actually you're going to move it up three frets from there 
B string on fret 12 and uh, G string fret 14. Uh, so it's a sound that's particular in a, a couple of songs as well, but you could throw that into a solo or to like a sort of rhythmical element and it will really instantly give you a very Hendrixy feeling. hammering on so it could be a rhythmical riff or it could be like a, a part of a lead but if we start with a rhythm I've had this vibe on even though it's not been doing much so I'll turn that off Gypsy Eyes, which at the beginning does this bend from the 5th to the 7th fret on the D string. And then Little Finger does the 8th fret of the bottom E string. Back to the 9th fret of the D string. into playing whenever you're playing Hendrix. playing uh, that I heard from Jimmy that I think 
give you that Jimmy sort of leaning. You know, if you're not doing an absolute cover, but you just fancy playing in that style or whatever, these things can really help you to do that. Now, as I said at the beginning, if you're still here, thank you for watching. Uh, this is definitely not a polished video. I'm well aware of that. Uh, I'm sure I'll get some sort of uh, ribbing in the comments for that, but this, the purpose of this is slightly different to a normal video. It's really to gauge your interest or to tell me, give, you know, well, I know what I should do, right? If I really want to do this properly, I just want to know if there's the interest to do it. And to it's basically an investment for me. I'd probably have to get someone else to do the tabs for me. Probably want a second camera angle, uh, better audio between clips, um, a lot more sort of almost scripting and a lot more editing, which uh, I would quite like to do. But again, would anyone pay for it? So let me know about that in the comments. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that or, or enjoyed what you got out of it. Um, so if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel to see more. As I said, I'm away for the next three weeks, back for two weeks, and then away again for two weeks. So you're gonna see some content that I filmed a while ago, a Joey Landreth amp video, and a video about my Reeves Electro ZO. And I'm hoping to film one more video tomorrow, which will be about the 1968 Univibe that I just got from King Tone. I'll compare it to the MXR Univibe that I did uh, in the last video. Anyway, have a good day. Cheers.